In many of our previous lessons, we used some input to tell some output what to do. This method of polling for input is valid and works for systems that are small and not time sensitive. But what ends up happening with this method is the microcontroller spends the majority of its time checking the input status, which leaves little room elsewhere to do other things in the program. The solution to this issue introduces the idea of priority. The loop function of a microcontroller will always run as it should, but every once in a while, when a certain type of input happens, that interrupts and pauses the loop function to run some more important code, and then return to the loop function and continue running. This idea is what is called interrupts. An interrupt can come in many different forms. The most common type would be from a push button, which causes a rising or falling edge transition. But interrupts can also be triggered from an internal module like digital timers, analog to digital converters, serial communication modules, or a change in the status of an input pin. Here is the schematic for this lesson's experiment. We'll go through each section describing the circuit's purpose in our experiment. First we have the circuit's regulator. A 9 volt battery is input into a 7805 plus 5 volt regulator which will power our circuit. A red LED is used to notify us that power is good. Then, the ATmega328 microcontroller connects to plus 5 volt power and to ground. A reset circuit connects a push button to the microcontroller for resetting the currently running program. Then, we'll use a USB to serial converter module to upload programs to the microcontroller through the TX and RX pins. A 16 MHz crystal and two capacitors form the frequency control circuit connecting to pins X1 and X2 on the microcontroller. And finally, an LED will be used for output and a push button will be used for input to trigger interrupt. And that's the full schematic for this lesson. Before we continue to the software side of the theory, Let's look at some of the new functions that we'll be using. Go to the arduino.cc website and to the reference section. Scroll down a bit until you reach the external interrupts and interrupt sections. The first function in this section is the attach interrupt function. This allows you to set up an interrupt, specify the type of interrupt that it is, and create the name of the interrupt service routine where the special interrupt code will reside. The next function, detach interrupt, offers a way to get rid of any interrupt attached to a specific pin. The interrupts and no interrupts functions are more simple. They allow or disallow the use of interrupts. By default in Arduino, interrupts are enabled, so we actually won't need to use these two functions. So now let's take a look at the software theory for this lesson's experiment. We start out with the setup and loop function as always, but we'll add a third function called blink. This will be our interrupt service routine. At the top, we'll add an integer that will hold the delay value. Notice that it says volatile integer. This means that both the loop function and the interrupt service routine can change its value. Inside of the setup function, we will set up digital pin 13 as an output, since this is where our LED is connected. And we will attach interrupt zero to the blink function, and it will be triggered by a rising edge. This means when the voltage at interrupt 0 goes from 0 volts to 5 volts, an interrupt will be triggered. Inside of the loop function, we will use the same blinking LED code from lesson 4, but this time, the delay function in between turning the LED on and off will be a variable integer called value. And if you remember up top, value was initialized to 1000, so at first, this program should blink the LED with a 1 second delay. Lastly, Inside of our interrupt service routine called blink, we will decrease value by 200. This means that any time the push button is pressed, an interrupt will be triggered that decreases value, which should make the LED blink a little faster each time value is decreased. Before we build up the experiment for this lesson on interrupts, 
Let's go through the parts one by one to make sure they're all accounted for and understood. The large parts are a jumper wire kit, the parts kit, and a breadboard. The specific parts from the parts kit that we'll be using are a 7805 plus 5 volt regulator, two 100 ohm resistors, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, two 10 microfarad capacitors, two push buttons, an AT Mega 328 microcontroller with Arduino compatible bootloader, a 16 megahertz crystal, two red LEDs, two 22 picofarad capacitors, a 9 volt battery connector, four jumper wires, a USB to serial converter module with jumper wires, and a 9 volt battery and a laptop computer with Arduino IDE installed. With all the parts together, we'll build the circuit part by part in a time lapse so that you can follow along with the construction. And for the final steps of construction, we add the last four jumper wires to connect the USB to serial converter module to the microcontroller. So go ahead and plug in the USB to serial converter, power up the circuit, and upload the program that we wrote in the theory section. Initially, the program blinks the LED with the 1000 millisecond delay. When we press the push button, the interrupt occurs and decreases that value by 200. So now the delay is 800 milliseconds, and you can see the LED blinks a little faster. We push that button again, and now the LED blinks even faster with a 600 millisecond delay. And again, we press the push button, and the LED is now blinking much faster because it has only a 400 millisecond delay. And then it has only a 200 millisecond delay. And finally, a zero millisecond delay means the LED is blinking so fast our eyes cannot even tell, so it looks like it's always on. If you think about any typical machine with input and output, say a Coke machine or a cell phone, should the processors inside of these machines really be constantly pulling the status of the input buttons? Wouldn't it be better if instead the buttons triggered a small interrupt to let the processor inside know that the button was pressed and allow it to continue processing all its other tasks. A classic interrupt example that most Windows operating systems users will be aware of is the interrupt that occurs when you press the Control, Alt, and Delete keys all at once. In Windows 95, this triggered an interrupt reset signal to the computer telling it to restart, a deadly command but sometimes necessary. All parts in this online course we're provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Continuing forward with advancing complexity, the next lesson will cover how to communicate with another PC using serial communication. After all, computers need to know how to talk to each other, and microcontrollers are no exception.